people traveled from all over the country because they want to save the country. I could hardly wait to be here with all these like-minded people. Meeting all these people across the country that are gathering here, the grassroots team. Look at this. Look at this. And it's going to happen. Never been in an organization so powerful. The enthusiasm is infectious. I simply cannot believe what I've witnessed here today. This is a miracle in progress right here. You are the great patriots. We're going to save this country. You get a chance to be a part of the second American revolution without the bullets. We can achieve more than we have ever achieved before. So let's go do it. The first ever Convention of States Leadership Summit. Hi, I'm Mark Meckler. As president of Convention of States, I had a front row seat to this historic event and I wanted to give you just a little taste of what happened. About 400 Convention of States leaders representing thousands of volunteers from nearly every state gathered for an unforgettable weekend. Oh, hi. We're going to bridge with all these people from all over the country that I've talked to online and I finally get to meet them. And now we're just, and, and it's so funny, I talked to the people in the airport, they already knew who I was. So fun, it's wonderful. They came up and say, I know you. And it's wonderful. I can hardly wait to be here with all these like-minded people. The speakers that they have scheduled and the workshops, the, the breakout sessions that are scheduled on specific topics about grassroots activism. And hopefully the things that we can take back will help us to get our team stronger to be able to grow the grassroots even more, to be able to put the pressure on the legislators. Seeing people, you, uh, everybody, and connecting a face and then hugging, there's something about that, that physical connection that I think is going to move us toward the next level. There's a certain feeling, a familial feeling, a, a compassionate feeling towards your fellow man that develops here. Man, that's just electric in the air right now. The event was held in Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia, the town where many of America's founders collaborated and also where General Washington rallied his troops before the historic victory at Yorktown. It's profound because when I was 10 years old, I came here 52 years ago. And it's where my heart fell in love with the history of my country. And so when Convention States said they were having this summit, I was like, I'm in. A sense of history filled the air, giving attendees a unique energy that you simply can't get anywhere else. And we're all going to share our ideas and we get to meet these people that we've been communicating online. People from all over the country to get together and to exchange ideas and maybe give us some helpful hints on how to push forward. From the very start, the atmosphere was electric. Spontaneous applause broke out as we kicked off the opening night's activities. Tony Clay, a COS Tennessee volunteer and a professional singer in the Nashville music industry, opened the event with a rousing rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. As the event's MC, I gave a heartfelt address to these patriots that I love so much. We're here because we believe that the country is at risk. So people traveled from all over the country because they want to save the country. And when I saw my son take that oath, to me I thought, if he's willing to put his life on the line, literally, then I have to be willing to be in the fight forever as well. And I want to tell you one really important thing. I will never, never, ever quit. I will not quit. Then we welcome the nationally renowned historian David Barton. He set the tone for the entire event by giving a brilliant presentation on how the principles in the Declaration of Independence are manifested in the Constitution, particularly the Article 5 Convention of States process. This is why we've lasted 232 years, because we've had a set of principles that didn't change with every whim that came across. Now, here's the sixth and final one. Whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, in other words, when a form of government says, well, we don't think there's rights and wrongs, and by the way, we don't think you should have the right to acknowledge God and your inalienable rights, we'll tell you what they are and what you can do with them. It's the right of the people to alter or to abolish government and to institute new government laying its foundation on such principles. Article 5 says, hey, we recognize that there are going to be changes you need to make from time to time. Here's how you can do it. And see, one of the things the Founding Fathers understood is you don't let the body who's out of control be in charge of making the changes. 
So when... It's not just about a convention, it's about self-governance. It's about being educated citizens, right? The founders told us it's just a par parchment barrier. Constitution, just parchment, unless it's us behind it. Because they were great students of history, they said, here's tools you can use. When your government gets out of balance, when your government starts doing things that it doesn't need to do, here's how you can get it back in. I got to sit down with my friend and founding board member, Eric O'Keefe, who shared his perspective on the fight for America and the defiant spirit that runs in our veins. Invention of States, I, I've loved it ever since that Ferris phone call. It so richly captures, it reaches back to the founding and, and to the principles touch on last night and today too, right? It says, look, it's our country. We get to govern ourselves and the decisions about it should be made as close to home as possible in the family, in the county, in the state. The federal government was created by the independent states that had fought and won the revolution. That's who created it. They sent delegates to Philadelphia. It was created to, in order to create a more perfect union to protect our rights. Having a convention of states, convening one, will transform the debate, the narrative. It'll mean that all those reporters that live in Washington, D.C. and go to parties there won't be able to cover America from Washington, D.C. anymore. Fox & Friends weekend host and Iraq war veteran Pete Hegseth gave a rousing call to action. History's not over and America's not inevitable. There's nothing about the American experiment that says 25 years from now uh, we will be free, less free, more free. We make choices in our daily lives about whether to fight to keep it free or not. That's what this is about. And, and we are at a revolutionary moment. And you get, a, you get a chance to be a part of the second American revolution without the bullets. Okay, that's where we are. You know what it was? I kept showing up at event, at event, at event, at event. I'm not kidding you. And I kept seeing that Convention of States lapel and the button or any one of it. And they kept coming up to me every time. Have you heard of Convention of States? I'm like, nah. What are you talking? Have you heard of it? Have you heard of it? Have you looked at it? Have you looked at it? And then I started, and as, you, as you grow and learn in politics, as, as was so articulately talked about, you start to see what fails over and over and over again. And it's the stale establishment approach of incremental change in one direction or another of Republicans and Democrats. And you start to look around and say, there's got to be something that empowers us bigger than that. And when you look around and you find Article 5, it's like the lights go on. And it's our job to turn them on for everybody else. So our founders gave us this gift. May we live worthy of it. Later, we sat down to swap some funny stories that had the crowd rolling. So I'm on with you. I think we have a fantastic segment. I'm really happy with it. And we're sitting in these two kind of modern chairs, sitting pretty much just like this. And so I said to Lucy, how was it? She said, it was awesome. What's with the socks? This is on text, right? I'm like, what do you mean, what's with the socks? She goes, look at Pete. You're wearing old man socks. <laughs> <laughs> Like what? I had not anymore. No, though. not anymore. Look, hey man. Look at that. I learn. I, I took. I take fashion lessons from my daughter. Like, Fantastic. We got it dialed in now. Ever since then, trust me, I'm not caught dead in black <laughs> socks, man. She's my biggest critic. So <laughs> that's the lead into this, which is in your honor, we had designed Convention of State socks. No right? kid. So today we have a presentation for you. Whoops. No. Your very own pair of Convention of State socks. Look at that. Are you kidding me? We're going to see those on Fox and Friends, right? <laughs> I... All right. Tune in tomorrow morning. You'll All see right, these on see? the couch. <laughs> Absolutely. Dozens of breakout sessions were held throughout the weekend on subjects ranging from executing a successful capital rally or town hall, using the COS strategy toolkit, to understanding the political system and servant leadership. These workshops were absolutely packed. Many spark exciting discussions on how to take our fight for self-governance to the next level. Presenters included COS staff, state leaders, and even a few state legislators. And I even poked my head in on a few of the sessions. Legislative strategy hinges upon the activity of the grassroots. The grassroots activity is the engine that makes the strategy go and drives it forward. And I love it when a state director will um, reach out and say, hey, I need some help with this. I love that. 
Several leaders generously volunteered their time, tools, and talents to help capture the proceedings in photographs and video. In the evenings, these modern-day patriots kept the conversations going, spontaneously gathering for dinner at the historic taverns and restaurants just like the founding generation did. Chuck Cooper, an attorney in the Reagan administration and a man who represented the NRA in Second Amendment lawsuits all the way to the Supreme Court, shared why the Supreme Court is the primary threat to our constitutional rights, particularly the Second Amendment, and how we can fight back with the Convention of States. We are here because the framers equipped us and placed in our hands the means to ensure that the Second Amendment means what it says. I would have bet probably my last dollar that something like this wouldn't have happened. So this is a miracle in progress right here. No question about it. I simply cannot believe what I've witnessed here today with hundreds and hundreds of people with so much energy for the Convention of the States. I just would never have dreamed that this was possible. And so I couldn't be more excited, more honored to be here uh, and, and, and happier about what I'm seeing. Then we sat down for a moving talk with my very close friend, Dr. Tom Coburn, former U.S. Senator and senior advisor to the Convention of States. You're the leaders. You're the ones that are gonna make the difference. You're the ones that are gonna enthuse. You're gonna activate, you're gonna motivate, you're gonna mentor. Because they don't know we can actually fix our country. They're not aware that we have a tool that our founders gave us. And so my charge to you as you leave here today is let's go and win because I believe this country can cheat history. This republic doesn't have to die. This republic can survive. This republic can achieve more than we have ever achieved before. So let's go do it. Restoration of virtue will restore our freedom. And the only way we can do that is via Article 5. We have an inalienable right to self-government. We need to take it back. I'm in this to the end. Whenever that is. I don't think I can end it better than that. Saturday night's Constitutional Courage Banquet culminated in a raucous award ceremony including several surprise challenge coin presentations. We also unveiled a brand new award. Amy Frederick received Volunteer of the Year. That was a special moment. I can't think of anybody who deserves this award more than Amy Frederick. Volunteer, outstanding Volunteer of the Year. Thank you, Jim. The Mississippi team was named the State Team of the Year to rousing applause and it was an award that was well deserved. This is the strongest family I saw anywhere in the country. Camp together, fish together, eat together, and go to the legislature and kick some butt together. So I love these guys for that. But everyone was amped up for the main event. Mark Levin, whose number one best-selling book, The Liberty Amendments, helped kickstart the movement. This has been one of the most invigorating days and years for me, thanks to you. You are the great patriots who are going to save this country. And you know better than anybody, working in the neighborhoods and the communities, that this is a daunting task. Well, so be it. That's our burden. We have children, we have grandchildren. We're not going to surrender the greatest country on the face of the earth and turn it into another failed European experiment. The Constitution of the United States is the greatest governing document ever conceived. <clears throat> but we're fighting to keep what's left, but that's not good enough. We're fighting to get back what is ours.
You, fundamentally, are the only thing that stands between a growing tyranny and a free republic. The problems we are facing now involve a hundred years of a systemic attack on our constitutional and republican system. And so what's necessary is a willingness to fight back a year, ten years, a hundred years, whatever it takes. In an incredibly touching surprise, Minnesota State Director Jackie Burns gave her own personal challenge coin to Mark Levin. The, the caller that night said, you know, Mark, what you should do? And you went off on him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you said, what do you mean what I should do? I wrote a whole book for you called The Liberty Amendments. What are you doing? That was my defining moment. I thought, how long, Jack? God said to me. Are you going to pretend like he's not talking to you? So I want you to know that all those idiots that call, <laughs> I was one of them. And this is a reminder that your words fall on fertile ground. Oh my Please. God. We've never done anything like this before. This is, this is a first for us. And this is a Lifetime Achievement Award. Right? Because some people, I've been in the battle for a couple of years. You might even have been in the battle for a couple of months. Some of us have been in the battle a decade. Some of us for a couple of decades. But some people have been in the battle almost their whole lives and they've dedicated their lives to fighting for freedom, to fighting for liberty, defending the Constitution, defending regular people in America. And we think it's really important when somebody's willing to give their entire life to the cause of liberty and freedom that they be recognized. So it's my great honor and privilege to bring up my very close friend, Tom Coburn, to award him the Lifetime Achievement. Really, for me, the best part of being together was just that looking each other in the eyes, sharing a hug or a handshake, and getting to know our family of warrior patriots. We're getting together and actually breaking bread and swapping stories face to face, it's hard to describe what that feels like. Mark told me last night, a lady said, you know, there's a feeling I had here I just never have had before. Well, I'm gonna suggest to you what that is. It's the feeling of doing what you were made to do. This what you see up here and the way we feel about you and the way we feel about each other is the heart of this organization. There, there's a meaningfulness to serving something greater than yourself, God and country. And so when you can come back and find something like this that's so well run, the mission is so clear, there's a grassroots imperative in every state. Uh, and the training that I've been given, show up on time, work hard, have integrity, uh, commit, commit to a team, but also know how to lead. Those are all attributes that I know Convention of States loves. We give people a meaningful path to save the country. A, a way where they can actually make a difference individually, but also be part of something bigger than themselves. And that's what Article 5 does. It lets the states and the people take some power back and say, we need to restrain you guys. We let you get out of control. That was our bad, but we're going to fix it now. What are you waiting on, right? <laughs> Because, I mean, it takes people to be involved, and this is the way we can do it together as a team. A phenomenal experience for me. Yeah, baby, that was fun. I, what I love about it, it doesn't matter whether we're Republican or Democrat, it unites our country. Instead of dividing us, we can do it. You've had a wonderful few days here, and I want you to keep something in mind on the hot days when you're out there, on the cold days when you're out there, on the days that seem lonely out there. This is the way it works. This is the way it starts. You're leading a historic movement to preserve the most magnificent country on the face of the earth. God bless you and thank you. Go to conventionofstates.com, press the button, sign the petition, 
more importantly, get 10 of your friends to do the same. When you sign the petition, then that sends a letter to your state legislator. You go on the list in their district as a supporter. We deliver those lists to the state legislators. It means something to them.